First of all, it's great to see you again, Mr. President, and uh, good to have you here for the uh, summit. And uh, we are going to discuss many important issues at the summit. Among them is defense spending. And we all agree that we have to do more. I agree with you that we have to uh, make sure that allies are investing more. The good news is that uh, allies have started to invest more in uh, defense. Uh, after years of cutting defense budgets, they have started to uh, add billions to the defense budgets. And uh, last year was the biggest increase uh, in defense spending across Europe and Canada in a generation. Why was that last year? It's also because of your leadership, because of your uh, clear message. And, uh, and, uh, they won't write that. But no, won't. I have said it before, and, and, but the thing is that uh, uh, it really has... Uh, uh, it's, it, your message is having an impact, uh, and uh, we are going to build on that to make sure that we have further increases. Uh, you initiated last year that uh, all allies are going to develop national plans on how to spend more on defense. And based on these nas national plans, we now estimate that the uh, European allies and Canada will add 266 uh, uh, extra US dollars uh, for defense from now until 20 uh, billion US dollars until uh, until 2024. So, so this is really adding some extra money. It helps, uh, and we are moving in the right direction. But we still, uh, but, oh, but we still have to uh, to do more, and that is what we are going to address at the summit later on today. Let me also add that that strong NATO is good for Europe, but it's also good for the United States. Uh, the U.S. military presence in Europe helps uh, to protect Europe, but it also helps the United States to project uh, uh, power to the Middle East, to Africa, and uh, I think also that the cloud, the military cloud of, uh, uh, of Europe, uh, the economic cloud, the political cloud, also is helpful dealing with, uh, with Russia, and we look forward to the meeting we're going to have with President Putin, uh, and I think that leaders are also looking forward to uh, your thoughts about the meeting with President Putin at, uh, later on? Uh. Well, I have to say, I think uh, it's very sad when Germany makes a massive oil and gas deal with Russia, where you're supposed to be guarding against Russia, and Germany goes out and pays billions and billions of dollars a year to Russia. So we're protecting Germany, we're protecting France, we're protecting all of these countries. And then numerous of the countries go out and make a pipeline deal with Russia, where they're paying billions of dollars into the coffers of Russia. So we're supposed to protect you against Russia, but they're paying billions of dollars to Russia. And I think that's very inappropriate. And the former chancellor of Germany is the head of the pipeline company that's supplying the gas. Uh, ultimately, Germany will have almost 70 percent of their country controlled by Russia with natural gas. So you tell me, is that appropriate? I mean, we've, I've been complaining about this from the time I got in. It should have never been allowed to have happened. But Germany is totally controlled by Russia because they were getting from 60 to 70 percent of their energy from Russia and a new pipeline. And you tell me if that's appropriate, because I think it's not. And I think it's a very bad thing for NATO, and I don't think it should have happened. And I think we have to talk to Germany about it. On top of that, Germany is just paying a little bit over 1 percent, whereas the United States, in actual numbers, is paying 4.2 percent of a much larger GDP. So I think that's inappropriate also. You know, we're protecting Germany, we're protecting France, we're protecting everybody, and yet we're paying a lot of money to protect. Now, this has been going on for decades. This has been brought up by other presidents, but other presidents never did anything about it because I don't think they understood it or they just didn't want to get involved. But I have to bring it up because I think it's very unfair to our country. It's very unfair to our taxpayer. And I think that these countries have to step it up, not over a 10-year period. They have to step it up immediately. Germany is a rich country. They talk about they're going to increase it a tiny bit by 2030. Well, they could increase it immediately tomorrow and have no problem. I don't think it's fair to the United States. So we're going to have to do something because we're not going to put up with it. We can't put up with it. And it's inappropriate. So we have to talk about the billions and billions of dollars that's being paid to the country that we're supposed to be protecting you against. You know, everybody's, everybody's talking about it all over the world. They'll say, well, wait a minute, we're supposed to be protecting you from Russia, but why are you paying billions of dollars 
to Russia for energy, why are countries in NATO, namely Germany, having a large percentage of their energy needs paid, you know, to Russia and, and taken care of by Russia? Now, if you look at it, Germany is a captive of Russia because they supply. They got rid of their coal plants. They got rid of their nuclear. They're getting so much of the oil and gas from Russia. I think it's something that NATO has to look at. I think it's very inappropriate. You and I agree that it's inappropriate. I don't know what you can do about it now, but it certainly doesn't seem to make sense that uh, they pay billions of dollars to Russia, and now we have to defend them against Russia. You know, NATO is an alliance of 29 nations, and uh, there are sometimes differences and uh, different views and also some disagreements, and uh, gas, uh, uh, pipeline from Russia to Germany is one issue where allies uh, disagree. But the strength of NATO is that despite these differences, we have always been able to unite around our core task uh, to protect and defend each other because we understand that we are stronger together than uh, apart. Uh, I think that two world wars and the Cold War thought was that uh, we are stronger together than apart. Um, but how can you be together when a country is getting its energy from the person you want protection against or from the group that you want protection against? Because you understand that uh, when we stand together, also when uh, dealing with Russia, we are stronger. I think what we have seen is that... No, you're just making Russia richer. Well, you're not well, dealing with Russia, you're making Russia richer. Well, so I think that even during the Cold War, uh, NATO allies were trading with uh, Russia. Then there have been uh, disagreements about what kind of uh, trade arrangements we should, uh, we should go I into. I think trade is wonderful. I think energy is a whole different story. I think energy is a much different story than normal trade. And you have a country like Poland that won't accept the gas. You take a look at some of the countries, they won't accept it because they don't want to be captive to Russia. Mm. But Germany, as far as I'm concerned, is captive to Russia because it's getting so much of its energy from Russia. Mm. So we're supposed to protect Germany, but they're getting their energy from Russia. Explain that. And it can't be explained. You know that. All right. Thank you, Press. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Press. Thank you, Press. Thank you. Thank you, Press. Thank you. Thank you, press. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.